All right, you wrong them. So you made it to chapter four. Most excellent. Right, let's jump straight in. Right, so if you remember in the last um, chapter, we we inked him, we've done all our drawing, the animation's you know, adequate, it's okay. So what we're ready to do now is do the finishing up for him. So what we want to do is obviously block in the colours, um, add his shadows, add the stripes, eyes, claws, etc. The colour, basically the colour and finish him up basically. But before we do that, there's a few things I want to do. We want to do a bit of house cleaning. A, to clean up some of my mistakes that I made and B, things can get very confusing very quickly in grease pencil if we're not careful. All right, let's just pause that animation. Now, if you're in your scene collection, it should look something like this. You'd have your T-Rex um, and you've got your, we've got two different grease pencil objects. We've got our ink object and our T-Rex object. Now, in my infinite for wisdom, I've I can't remember why or when I did it, but I've, they're named wrongly, as in T Rex should be called ink because it's an ink, and the ink should could be called T Rex or even pencil. So if, let's just first rectify that mistake. So let's just call this ink T Rex seventeen. Just let's call it ink, and the Ink hole one now. Ink hole one, let's just call this pencil. So we know where we're up to. Don't worry, I know it sounds a bit confusing, but there's a method to the madness. So we now know that this ink, that's our ink layer, and that's our pencil layer. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just, we're gonna, um, delete our pencil layer because uh, we just want to keep things nice and simple what I'm going to also suggest you do is um, if you haven't done so already download the the reference images um, the eight walk cycle reference images because we're going to use that for our stripes so you're going to, you are going to need it to to get the stripes work looking looking uh, accurate or download the um, the the Blender file. I'll put a link on my Gumroad repository. Right. So, as I say, we're gonna we're doing some housekeeping. So this pencil that we've just named, we're gonna delete. I just want to just so that we delete in the right layer. So we're gonna delete this. Right click. And delete. So now, our animation's gone. You should have saved your animation before you delete it because it might be painful. So now we've just got our ink layer. So there's no confusion. It's nice and clean. It's, we're ready to go for the next stage without any confusion or anything. Right. So as I said, we're doing housekeeping. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do, I've done it already. So I'm not going to go through each each and every bit. We're just going to do a bit of house housekeeping on the on the character. So say for example, we've got this ink, this ink layer, this ink uh, object. Now, you see that intersecting line? You're gonna have intersecting lines, I'm sure. So when you see an intersecting, intersecting line that is that is that looks a bit aggressive and a bit painful, there's a way to resolve that and, that, and that is just by just cutting it. So now we've got rid of, rid of that intersecting line. So, Go through each each frame and look for anomalies. Make sure you're on um, grease pencil animation. Click on that. There we go. I can see our frames. The other suggestion I'll do because I've got this on sixteen. Let's if you remember the trick that I showed you. Um, well, not a trick. Just the workflow method that I showed you last time is because we're on sixteen to to avoid any. Um, mistakes and creating stuff on the wrong frame. Let's just bring this back to, so we're gonna use an eight frame. So remember, bring the taskbar back to uh, one, make sure all the frames are selected, make sure the ink layer is active, make sure none of these are locked, 
and then press um, scale, S for scale. Make sure you're in this window here. S for scale. Don't, oh, let's do it again. Don't, don't move anything. Just move your cursor over here. S for scale. And then, press, then 0 0.5. And that'll bring our, our, our 16 frames back to the normal 8 that we were doing. So now we've just got 8 frames. So as I say, what I want you to do is go through each frame, make sure there's no intersecting lines, clean it up. Like that one's a bit aggressive there, I suppose. We can cut that a bit if we want. So we'll cut that. Yeah, so just, and there's that one, we'll cut that. And we'll cut that. So just basically go through it, clean it up. So once you've done that, you've done the, that pass, the other thing I want you to do for the housekeeping is we want this object to be watertight. Uh, there's a reason for this. Um, we'll talk about it in a second. So I want I don't want any to see any holes in this mo in your model or in in the model that you're creating. So any kind of hole end like this hair, just kind of. Uh, Clean it up. Make sure that there's no intersecting holes. And make it nice and nice and clean. So you're obviously gonna have to go through each frame. Make sure that have a, analyze it. The better the better job you do at this point, the easier it's gonna be. So you just go through each frame. See that there's a big gap there. Make sure that cleaned up. So go through each one. Clean it up. Yeah. There's one a big one on the towel there as well. Yeah, you see that? I guess the way we could have we to to resolve these issues, and and I'm remiss of not doing it. When I was inking, perhaps overlapping it, so doing overlaps when I was inking. So if I was if I overlapped it more, then the cleanup process would be just a matter of cutting, as opposed to um, being more painful than than it needs to be. So that's just something to to bear in mind for the future. Okay, so once you've cleaned it up and you're, you're, you're kind of, you, you feel that your object is watertight. Now, if you notice, the way I've always been doing my uh, colouring, I've been colouring using, um, I'll show you, well, if you, as you know, I've been colouring, let's, Let's create a, uh, let's just use it, it doesn't matter, let's just use that color. Um, I've been coloring. Don't worry about that, I'm just trying to show you something. I've been coloring using this technique here, you know, so you're filling in, going, you know, so you're filling, say for example, you've got a, you want to do the square, you fill in with that, in, in that way we've been doing it. But we're, we're not gonna be doing that in in this part of the, well, we are gonna be doing it for the more intricate parts, but we're gonna use the fill bucket for for the for the main parts of it, because it's, it's all about speeding up production and trying to do each and every frame like that, it's gonna to take too long. So we need to do, the blocking in colors, um, streamline the workflow a bit. So we have, we have to use the, the bucket tool, but we will use that in conjunction with the, the, the normal way I, I, I usually fill stuff. Right. So, we've got eight frames. We've got our ink, we've got ink shadow. I'm not sure if you've got an ink shadow on your one here. Uh, that was that ink shadow was an actual material. Okay, so make sure that you're in your layers option. So we, you should only have one uh, layer, and that should be called ink. So we're going to create a new layer here, and we're going to call this block color. Now 
Make sure this block color is below your ink layer. And we're gonna create a, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the orange color for the, the main color of the T-Rex. So we're going to, let's make a, uh, let's like make a material as well for it. So let's just create a new material. Let's call that block color. Just so there's no confusion. So we'll call that block color. And let's make a, let's make a new palette and let's call that block color. So we're gonna make our orange color Don't have our uh, have it ramped up too high because then the light what what they want the light won't affect it so much. So that's a nice orange. It's a plus that. So we've got a block color for the first orange. For the time being, let's just deal with this one color. All right. So we've got that. So we're gonna block him in. So we're gonna click on the make sure that. Vertex is activated, you've got block color activated here. Let's just turn off the other one so there's no mis mistakes. Um, make sure that block color is below ink in our layer. Go and make sure you're on frame one. And let's start blocking him in. So, and also we turn off use lights. We're not gonna use lights at the moment. Just turn off use lights and let's block the very first color in. Click on there. Now, it's done an outline here and that's not what we want. So we've got undo. Now, let's go back to our, um, click on there. It should be, make sure that mold is on fill and make sure that our block color is on fill and stroke is off. Now, hopefully when we press fill, it should fill it in properly. Yeah, it's filled it in. So what's happened here, when I've clicked that fill, it's not watertight, the, 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 um, the character. You're gonna face this problem a lot as well. So I'm glad this has happened so I can show you how to resolve it. Obviously we undo it. So the way to do it is you've got leak size here. If we ramp up this leak size, let's ramp up to say about 11 and let's try again. It's a bit better. See that? It hasn't leaked out. So it's obvious there's some holes in this, in this, in this character. So we can ramp up the, let's bring it down a bit more. Let's try again. There you go. That's not so bad. And then we can just go around and the main bits we, we, we go through. Yeah. So don't worry, don't worry about the, the gaps at this. If there's these little bits, don't just go in and individually do them. It's just, it's just gonna take too long. Just get the main blocks done. Yeah, the main bits and then move on to the next frame. So we do that. And then I'll show you what we do afterwards. We get the main blocking of, it, of the character done. Move to frame two and then do the same. That one's, that's what, that one's worked out a bit better. And then we go to frame three and then you get the drift. I'm not sure why it's done. I think it's just a bug. It's got edit undo. If it, if it, if it, if that happens and it says no edges to fill, just change your the leak size, and that should solve the problem. He says confidently. Let's just whack the leak size up again. There we go. See it solved it. I think it's just a bug that. So don't, but don't worry about it too much. Just play around with the leak size if you, if you encounter that, that issue. Or what you could do, the, the issue that it could be is it, it can't work it out. So probably you've got a, a gap so big that it just throws up an error. So try and clean up your, if you have that error, that bug, go around and play with your, your, um, your inks your ink uh, strokes to make them uh, the, the object watertight. So let's say, 
we go through each frame and once you're happy with each frame and it's all blocked out then as i say we don't want to we're not worrying a bit about the detail yet just block it out once you're happy with the block out rough the rough block out we're going to switch to our pencil so then you we, for the fine detail stuff we'll just pencil it in hang on a minute we'll um we would then pencil it in right now here's the thing this is what's happened here is there's a bug see i've just gone to from normal filling to um pencil and and it should be blocking in the color um the same orange but it's not for some reason it's doing it black right now this this threw me off for a little while and i worked out it is a bug it's not you doing anything many mistakes it's a bug i'm pretty certain of it so the way i worked out a way of resolving it and this is what how what how i go about doing it is now let's try and wreck my brain how I, how I did it. Right. So let's just create a, a new material. And let's call this uh, Vertex Bug. Just just call it, it, that doesn't matter. I'm just trying to make things simple. So this is a, I know it's not perfect. But we are using a, v, uh, a what's again, um, a beta version. Or you may even be using a, the alpha. So call this Vertex Bug. Then we make sure that's on fill. And then we um, make sure that's activated. Turn that to, you're gonna use that as a material. Click on base color, click on there, and then click on the object here. Actually, before we do that, what we want to do, so sorry, click on, you don't click on there. What you do is you click on the vertex icon, click on it, make sure mix factor, this is a bug, uh, but this is the only way I, I found a way of doing it. Make sure mix factor is down to, z to zero, yeah? Then click on your base color, click on the, your eyedropper tool and then click on it now and then click on our material because we're drawing with our material now so now when i go to pencil it will color in the right color yeah not black you see that see what i've done there it's not it's not it is a bug um you might do it on your version and you might not come up with this anomaly but if you do this is the this that's the way to solve it so now i can just go around what i'm doing now is doing the fine detail uh cleaning up the the object yeah so we will we'll cl clip clip do do all the, the the bits it doesn't matter if we go over the teeth or anything like that at the moment and then i want you to block in each frame make sure that each frame is is done once you've once you've done each frame once you've blocked in each frame then we move to the next stage and the next step. so the next stage is um do any stripes now let me just to talk about before i just talk about the stripes let me just try and talk about the vertex color and trying to get it uh kind of into your mind the vertex color is even though it, we haven't got layers in the vertex colors in the vertex color palette we are using that same process of building up so what i would say is don't do things like his teeth and his eyes or his claws or his you know his claws yet use the fine detail whatever character you're doing in the future use the do, use it as in when you're using vertex paint uh, as you're building up 
like layer by layer like in Photoshop, you know, even though you can't, there's no layers in Vertex Paint, you still build up your, 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 your object. I hope I un you, you, you understand that. If you haven't understood it, don't worry. It slowly, as you do it, the more you do it, eventually the penny drops. So don't panic. Don't, oh, I don't understand. This is just too hard. No, just, it, it is, it is a little, it just takes a little while for your brain to process on it. You know, the more you do it, your brain kind of, you know, the synapses, your neural connections, they all connect up and you go, oh yeah, I know how to do it now. So just, just relax. Don't, if you, you know, we're learning. So you don't expect everything to just work straight away and you get frustrated and throw it away. We, we just hang in there. Hang in there, buddy. Or hang in there, girls. You know what I mean? We can do this. We can do this. Right. So as I say, we're blocking each individual color on each frame. And the next step, we're going to be adding our layers now, our stripes. So the first thing we want to do to add our, our, our layers in our, in our stripes is make sure that we're going to add a layer. You've got to make sure that this squiggly icon is activated. Hit the, you should have in your scene collection area under layers, you just have to, it should be very nice and clean, ink and block color. And then we're just going to add a new one. I'm going to call this stripes. We want our stripe to be below our ink layer, but above our block color. Yeah, so ink stripes. Um, we're going to create a material called stripes. I might have created a material earlier on called stripes. If not, I'm going to create a new one just so that we're, we're kind of together. So I didn't. So let's just call this um, stripes, new stripes. Now, as I say, the, the further we go in this tutorial, the more complicated things get. But don't worry if we, if you don't get it on the first time. The more you do it, the more you practice, eventually things will, will, will get better for you. And you also have to remember, we're pioneering this technology. Some things we, we do, there might be a bug or whatever, and it'll throw us off, you know, off, off, our, off our game. So don't worry about it. We're pioneering this technology. We're using... Uh, you might be using the alpha version, you might be using the beta version, or you might be watching this way in the future and we've done all the hard work and you're just looking at this stuff now and they've sold, there's a different workflow we're using. So just don't worry, we just relax, calm it, calm it down, don't panic, don't give up. You know, this is a long ongoing process, we're going to get it, we're going to do this together and we're going to get it right. Okay, that's enough of the prep talk. Right, so we're on stripes. That layer is activated. Let's, um, again, the vertex color. I'm not sure if I created a, 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 a vertex color beforehand. Vertex palette for the stripes. If not, we're creating one anyway. So make sure stripes is activated. The vertex, uh, the blue icon is activated. Click on it. I did create one called stripes before. Let's just delete that because I just want you to just we'll get back into doing it as if do it from fresh. So if you want to create a new layer, these are all the ones we've done already. Um, I say I've got teeth and eyes because I created that earlier on, but ignore that. Don't need to worry about it. We're going to just create a new one for stripes or new, and let's call this palette stripes. And then we're going to find a nice gray color for these stripes. That's, that's an eye. And then we're just going to add it. So we've got our stripe palette. Yeah, make sure the mold is on stroke and fill. Just make sure that's stroke and fill. Make sure that use lights in our stripes is off. Make sure that material is on um, fill. And we should be ready to rock and roll with our first very first stripe now. So let's do this. So if you remember on the animation, his head on his, uh, if you notice, I did his eyes on that, his eyes turn yellow, they shouldn't. When, what I will say to you is don't do his eyes yet. And I think I said it already, but don't do his eyes or teeth yet. Ignore that I've done that. Use 
do his eyes and his teeth very last. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you notice the volume of his head doesn't really change, it just moves up and down and slightly rotates. So we can basically do up to hair in just by moving, do one frame and copy and pasting it and rotating it slightly or whatever. So let's do the first, I'll do the first frame, first couple of frames with you and then I'll skip forward because there's no need for you to, for me to show you every, every single frame. So we're ready to rock and roll now. So as I say, make sure stripes is activated, make sure vertex paint is activated, make sure that you've got stripes in your vertex palette and make sure that your your stripe layer is below your ink layer. So let's let's do this. So for our stripes, we're gonna use the curve tool to create our stripes. And this is where, when I said to you earlier on, getting that reference, uh, downloading a reference image would be great because now you can just look at the reference image and you can uh, get the stripes looking right. Well, I'm not going to do, I'm just going to give, I'm not, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'll just do, just so that you can get, you know where we're up to. So, okay, so we've, we've done that first stripe. So what we want to do now is we want to copy that to, if you remember when we did the ink, when we done that ink um, of his, his head and we just copied it from frame to frame, we're going to basically do the same thing with his stripe for this layer. So make sure the stripe's activated, go edit mode, and then we're just gonna select, turn off the other layers so that we're only selecting easy stripe. Click on it. And now, right click, copy it. Don't duplicate, copy it. Go to the next frame and then paste it. Do that, do that for every single frame. So two, three, and then paste it. And then all we all we do is because the head doesn't really rotate it rotates slightly. All we're doing is we will select that and we just move it down. So let's go. Um, see what I did there as well. I moved the cursor to selected. By um, I won't, I'm not going to get into that. Just basically use the 3D cursor and position it, and then you can and make sure that this icon is activated. Your 3D cursor, and then we can just move stuff. So all we're doing is moving our layer down. So each frame, one, two, three, and then you can move it. And if you've got to rotate it, then you can rotate it. So it's rotating around that point there. If we, if we move the 3D cursor to that position here, and then we just make sure the 3D cursor is activated here, and then we rotate it. If you remember before, we, we, we've gone through how to do this. And then you can rotate it like that. So you want to copy the head for each and every frame. So do the head. And then once you've done the head, we'll then, I'm gonna skip forward now to, cause we're coming to closer to the final uh, part. So I'm gonna just talk about how I did the rest of the, the, the layers, like the rest of the stripes, yeah? Okay. Okay, so, Obviously we've done the head and the head is on it each and every frame and we, we, we moved it, positioned it so it's fine. And then how we did the body is just that exactly the same way, but with the body we had to draw on every single frame. So it's just a matter of, this is why 
downloading the reference was important so that you can actually see the way the, the shapes of the, the stripes move. So then you just draw the stripes on that layer. You would make sure that, as I say, make sure all other layers are turned off because you're just dealing with the stripes and you just draw it for each and every layer. As I say, when you're drawing the stripes, it's better to use the curve tool to do it. So once you're happy with the stripes, you would then move on to um, the very last uh, part of, of blocking in the character is you would do his eyes and his teeth. I shouldn't have to explain it, everything to you. By now, should it, should, Penny should be dropping the teeth and eyes. You, do, I created a new layer for that and made it at the top. So you create your your your, your layer for your teeth and eyes at the top. If the penny hasn't dropped, don't worry. As I say, I keep on saying, eventually it will. So you do your teeth and eyes will be above your stripes and above your block color. And then let's just move on to the, the sexy stuff now, which is our, our, our real time lights. So now if we just unlock everything, and then if we just scale this animation up, um, S, and then two, because we're doing shooting on double exposures, if you remember. And then if we played this, we're looking at the sexy stuff now. And if we look at the, if we go to object mode, and then we move our light, you can see it affecting the, the character in real time. So it's just a matter of you positioning the light where you want it. Something to, to bear in mind when you, when you, when you created a light. So how you create a light for starters, if you're not sure how to do it, you go add light point, yeah? And when you, then your light will be created. The thing that you, that will throw you off with your lights is sometimes it creates it right in the center. So you want your light, you don't want your light to be behind it. If your lights are behind the character, obviously you won't be able to see. I've got three lights in this scene, obviously. But, you won't see, see it, it won't affect the character. So that's something that you've got to bear in mind. So if you if, if the lights are not affecting your character, make sure that they're in front of your character. The other issue you might have with your light is um, the, the wattage is, I've whacked up the wattage. So you, I think you, you change the wattage for, if, if it's, I think it, when it starts off, it boots up, it's only 10. So you might have to increase your wattage power to whatever. So that could be another issue where you, your lights are not um, activating on the scene. And obviously you can increase your radius as well of your lights. Okay. So that's the sexy stuff done. Uh, obviously real-time light shadows don't work on, on our character. So I, basically what I did here um, is I created a fake shadow. And the way you create a fake shadow is if we clicked on, make sure that the the object is, um, it's called T-Rex here now. It should have been, you, I think we changed it to ink before, but it doesn't matter. Let's just uh, leave it as it is anyway. But if we go on how I created the 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 shadow, fake shadow, is I clicked on this icon, the visual effects properties, clicked on here. And then let's, let's just uh, get rid of it and do it from scratch. Let's go. And I've got added, and also I'll show you how to do the glow as well. So I'll delete that as well. So delete the glow and the shadow. So we're gonna just do the shadow for them, uh, the shadow first. So you go add effect. So make sure this is icon selected. Make sure, first of all, make sure that your T-Rex or your, you know, your, your main grease pencil object is selected. Then you go add effect and then we go shadow. And then what we're going to do is um, let's scale up the shadow. And then you can position it to wherever you want it by just, um, this is your X and Y op offset. So X pixels, left to right, Y up and down. So that's that. And then... You can obviously play around with the alphas by clicking on it. So you can make it lighter and darker. And then obviously you can have your blur. Samples is basically, uh, you can have it higher for better quality or lower for, you know, depending on how you want it. Have a play with it. 
Right, so that's the shadows done. And obviously the shadows are gonna play, um, copy you, you don't have to do anything special, it just copies your, your, your movement. So, right, so that's the one effect. The other effect is I, I added a glow to it as well. So if we just go add effect and glow, and then it adds a glow. Um, again, with the sample, you want your samples to be very high and you want also, oh, the, the thing that will throw you off is when you add a, when you add an effect, it adds it in the same kind of window, but below your, so it's below our shadows now. So try not to get confused. I often do it. You, this shadow is a separate entity than glow, obviously. But sometimes you, you add an effect and you start messing about with these, these, these effects here, but you're not on your proper one. If you get me, you're not on your, your, your the new effect that you've loaded in. So with glow, so you can, samples are important for glow. So you want to get ramp up the si samples because the lower the samples, you see it gets really blocky and you can't really see, um, it, it, it doesn't look really smooth. So you want to whack your samples up pretty high and then you can play with your opacity level with your glows as well. Have a play with it and you get the effect that you want. So, I think that kind of uh, ramps it up now for 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 for, for that um, for what we're doing here for this uh, tutorial. Let's lower, lower that opacity down. Um, Yeah, so that kind of ramps it up for uh, Scavenger Part 4. In Scavenger Part 5, we're going to deal with sculpting. Now, you might be a bit, uh, you might you might cry off on uh, Scavenger 5. You might have had enough of me by now. But hopefully you haven't. And if not, I would strongly recommend you check out Scavenger Part 5. Because we're going to deal with sculpting now. You may be coming from this and going, oh, I don't want to learn 3D more. Well, you, you, you know, a, a 3D kind of program, uh, but you're doing 2D stuff. But you're going, oh, I just want to do 2D stuff. I don't want to get into all the 3D modeling and all that. I'm going to try and throw it to you that it's, it, it would be great if you you got away from that mindset. The power of Grease Pencil is the, the fact that we can combine 3D and 2D together. Um, if you don't pigeonhole yourself just for 2D stuff, learn the 3D stuff as well. The power of Blender Grease Pencil is the fact that we can combine 3D stuff as well. Even if you're gonna just mainly do 2D, to understand 3D is really good, as in the sense of, um, say for example, you wanna, you wanna see a character from a different angle, draw it, you can sculpt it first. And then you've got that reference material. I've talked about this in other materials, but even in, Disney, when they were doing just to obviously just 2D stuff, they would have a, a sculpting guy and he would come in and he would sculpt your character for your, um, for the 2D animators. So that when they came to, to do hard, hard angles, you know, hard to uh, view angles or hard to view perspective, they've got a, an actual real life mannequin to, to draw from. And we've got that ability to, 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 to be able to uh, create a, a 3D sculpted model. So I would say, even if you're just, your future is 2D, you just want to do 2D stuff, learn 3D stuff. This is the beauty of it. Learn the free, learn the, 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 the blender in the 3D sense. And so that you can model stuff and look at it from different angles. The power of grease pencil, in my view, and this is what makes it outshine everything is that interaction between 3D and 2D. And if we if we master those two elements, it's gonna make our, our storytelling and our, our, our models and will come to life a lot better if we can if we can how do you put it um, bridge those two disciplines, the 2D side and the 3D side. You know, there's some people who are just doing 3D, good. Some people just doing 2D, all good. But just imagine if we can do 3D and 2D together, we can bridge those two disciplines as 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 our as our how do you put it as our in our tool set. So I'll leave you with that thought: bridging those two disciplines, 2D and 3D, 
and we're gonna you know you stick with me in this channel and we're gonna we're gonna master those two disciplines you know we're gonna travel the way and we're gonna do some really sexy and cool stuff all right thanks for watching i'm out look out for part five it's gonna be modeling don't be scared we're gonna do this together laters <laughs>